The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesavento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks, and I'm going to start the show a little differently today. I had a request from someone uh, via email that uh, they asked me if I knew why markets uh, moved the way they did, and I could honestly say I have no clue why they move that way. I have a pretty good clue of how they move, but not why they move. And so I'm going to ask you uh, to follow along here. Uh, if you're listening here on TFNN and you're driving in your car, I don't want you to do it until you get home, but it's very it's very simple. I've asked um, uh, several of our TV uh, people in the Tiger Den to give me two random numbers uh, between 1 and uh, 100, and the two numbers that they came up with were... 35 and 75. So I'm going to start this and talk to you a little bit about, uh, you know, the Fibonacci numbers. As we know, they start out with 0 and 1, and you add them together, and you get 1 and 1, and you go 1 and 2, and then 2 and 3, and 5 and 8, 8, 13, 21, 35, 55, 89, you know, 144, etc., etc., 377. But we're just going to focus on the first eight integers. When, when Fibonacci went to study the pyramids uh, back in the 13th century, he had found that the height of the pyramid was 754 uh, feet. Excuse me. The height of the pyramid was 465 feet. And if you divide it by the base of the pyramid, which is 754 feet, it comes out to the ratio of 0.618. And that's how he started to understand these ratios uh, much better. He wrote a paper called Liber Abaci. I believe it was in around 1240-something uh, A.D., and that basically moved the um, the Western world from using Arabic numbers uh, and uh, to uh, using arithmetic numbers. So he was uh, quite the uh, scholar when it came to numbers. So what I want to do is to show you how these numbers, even though they are they seem to be random, they are far from random. When Dr. Lowe wrote his book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street, in 2001, you know, describing these patterns that we look at, you know, these double tops, double bottoms, triple tops, triple bottoms, you know, these types of patterns. Uh, he, he said that these patterns, not only did they repeat with great frequency, but they were predictable to a great extent. Not perfect, but predictable enough that they gave you much more positive returns than if you were to do something just totally helter-skelter. So that's what we're trying to do, is to take a little bit of the chaos that's in the market and find these non-random things that occur. So if we just take two random numbers, and the two numbers that they gave us to look at today were the numbers 35 and 75. That's all you have to write down. You don't have to do anything other than that, because what you're going to do is you're going to take add 35 and 75 together and you're going to get 110 and then you add 75 to the 110 it's going to give you 185 if you add 110 to the 185 that gives you 295 and if you add 295 to 185 that gives you 480 and if you add 480 to 295 that gives you 775 and as you can see, we're almost at the same dimensions that we had uh, with the pyramid. And if you divide one by the other, if you divide the 480 by 775, you come out with 0.618. And if you uh, take 775 and divide it by 480, you come out with 1.618. Well, the square root of 0.618 is 0.786, and the square root of 1.618 is 1.27. So no matter when you start a sequence of numbers, after you've gone through eight cycles or iterations, you're going to come out with these ratios almost all the time. And that's why we're seeing them in the market so much. Uh, I don't know why they occur, but this is how they occur. Now, I started the, uh, the show today. Uh, there's so many things happening. You know, we should send Bernanke, you know, a basket of fruit or, uh, you know, some bagels and cream cheese or something, because I'll tell you, this guy, when he's on, he gives a, he gives volatility a new meaning, and these things have such incredible patterns that it, it really is, uh, 
you know, really is uh, exciting. But I posted into Tiger TV uh, the VIX index because uh, we, we are seeing a series of higher bottoms. Um, and, um, you know, after the um, the one that we're in right now, they've held the 786 each time. And remember now the market's gone higher each day and the VIX is not breaking. So it's telling us that there is a little bit of trepidation on the part of some people in the market as far as fear comes together. So we're going to go back in time just a little bit to uh, back in uh, early May when the uh, market, let me have to get to put this into Tiger TV if you'll give me a second here, and I think it's in there now. I went back and I pulled up the chart that we were looking at uh, back in May when the market was making its top and the VIX was making its bottom, and we were making this uh, 135 higher bottom pattern that we've had before. And at that point, you know, we were looking for, you know, the VIX to get very, very strong from this level. As a matter of fact, on, on Bezos' show, he thought that the VIX had an easy chance to make 20 or 21. Well, he was wrong. It got to 2050, right in the middle of his exact target. And that happened to be a... Um, you know, a beautiful uh, Gartley pattern that formed up there. Now what we've done is we've come back and we've tested those lows one more time. The reason why I put the relationship here between the VIX index and the Nikkei Dow is that we have the same pattern going on right now in the VIX today. This is the day, J July 17th, that we had when the uh, Nikkei Dow was down around 8,400. And that, if you'll take a look at this chart, when you get back to your uh, computer and you get a chance to look at Tiger TV, you'll see that these patterns that we looked at, they're incredibly similar. I mean, they are similar, not incredibly similar. They are similar. So what we're expecting here is we're expecting a huge move up in the VIX index, which should mean that the stocks would most probably uh, start to roll over if that is going to uh, to be the case. So that's what we're, we're looking at in the VIX index. So I wanted you folks to at least to have that on your radar, you know, to keep a uh, an idea of, uh, you know, something like that, uh, you know, could be happening, you know, very, very shortly. Now, the next market that we want to cover is, uh, you know, something that's dear to all of us. And I wanted to, uh, we've been watching it uh, uh, quite a bit. And uh, it is the gold market. And uh, if you'll go back and look over the last several months, I put into Tiger TV a, a chart that shows the last highs that were made in gold. And if you study the chart just a tiny bit closely, you'll see that each time the market made a high uh, over the previous high five days ago, it made a high by like $1. It did it on three occasions. It did it in May. It did it in June. And it's also done it today in July. We made a higher high by a dollar than we were at the 1299 level uh, five days ago and now we have a, a big move to the downside with an outside day where we've taken out the highs and the lows of the previous days and that uh, tells us that we're heading down and it looks like the gold is going to be moving down to the 1240 level which will be a 61 percent retracement of the move from um, you know july the 8th when we had the uh, the full moon excuse me the new moon and then uh, we will be looking at the uh, also the 61% retracement coming off of the other full moon that we had back on the um, well no that that didn't hit the 24th I'm sorry the um, the gold did not bottom on the full moon of the 24th it was not bottoming until four days later so it is bottoming off of the new moon of January of July the 8th but that, that's the only bottom that we have but that would be a, uh, a one three five pattern uh, to the downside uh, excuse me a one three five pattern to the upside where you'd have higher bottoms so the key here is to watch the the gold around the 1244 area that's down about thirty dollars from where we are right now and believe me if we can do thirty dollars in a matter of a few hours uh, we can do thirty hours over the ne or thirty dollars per ounce in the next few days without very much uh, trouble at all. In fact, if it gets there too quickly, we are almost assuredly know that it's going to go down and go a lot lower. This is the first major ABCD correction that we've had. Uh, it was absolutely perfect from the end of uh, June, you know, to early uh, July, and then down into the eighth, and then up to today. The uh, highs and lows were matched perfectly, where AB equals CD in time and price. And it really sets up a you know situation for lower prices, and that's pretty much you know what we're seeing so far today. But uh, whether it continues this way or not, you know we have to uh, 
to wait and see. But it's a very, very important uh, uh, pattern in our our opinion because it's it's hit there so many times that it really uh, sets up very nicely for a uh, a move down to that 1240 area in gold. And then I would certainly look at it from the um, the long side because it it does have the potential you know, to make a pretty good run. Now, the next uh, market that we want to look at is the uh, silver market. And uh, silver has been a st wicked stepsister when it comes to the gold market. It just can't get out of its own way. Um, while gold was making a higher high over the last week, in other words, we took out the high of uh, 1298 that we made five days ago, uh, silver could, could not even take out that high uh, it missed it by, you know, well over uh, 15 cents, which is a considerable amount of silver. That's about $750. So that's telling us that, you know, we are in a uh, corrective mode. We've actually made that uh, 786 retracement in silver already in one day. In other words, the relationship of where gold and silver should be is gold should be trading around the uh, $1,245 per ounce level if it were running neck for neck with silver. But in, in fact, it is not because silver is so much weaker. And uh, you remember, it's poor man's uh, it's the poor man's gold, and it is much more illiquid than the uh, the gold market. It'll move 15 or 20 cents, you know, if you even bat an eye. Whereas gold, to move 15 or 20 dollars, which is you know 1,500 or 2,000 dollars, takes a considerable amount of uh, you know buying. So the liquidity in silver is about one sixth of what it is um, in the gold market. There's a lot of uh, potential uh, of of silver to break the. Uh, it's only because it's only a dollar away uh, to break the lows that we made down at the 1,800 and excuse me 18 dollar and 40 cent per ounce level in silver that we made back on. Um, the 27th of June, and if we break that, that tells us that, you know, silver is probably going to be heading down to the $14 level, and, and that means if gold breaks, you'd be looking at gold, uh, you know, somewhere near $1,000 an ounce, but we, you know, we're still a long way away. You know, gold uh, gold has to see if it'll hold the the 12, uh, 1245 level, and that'll give us an idea of, uh, you know, where we're supposed to be. Uh, you know, with the uh, with the, both the gold and the silver, uh, copper can't get out of its own way. Uh, you know, every time it moves its head higher, uh, it gets hammered again. You know, very very badly. When we come back from the first break here, uh, we'll be talking about copper uh, a little bit more. And you know, show well. I've seen, I've shown this this chart so many times in copper that it's I guess it's old hat or it's boring or whatever but uh, it, it, it means something folks we've never had a big bull market in stocks without copper uh, you know tagging along because copper is so instrumental in housing electronics anything that uh, has anything to do with the current or electricity you know we've got copper so take a little break here 877-927-6648 Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads.
You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. With over three decades of commodity trading experience, Andy Hecht has developed a system that combines both technicals and fundamentals. He calls this approach Technomental, and now you can put it to work for yourself with his brand new service, the Technomental Commodity Report. In this weekly newsletter, which comes out each Thursday morning, Andy gives you his analysis of the market price direction bias using fundamentals and then specific trade recommendations, including entry and exit points using technicals. The recommendations in the newsletter are always based on stocks and ETFs, so a futures account is not required, and Andy will often use options in the recommendations as well. Andy will tell you where to get in, where to get out, and he'll outline the risk-reward profile for all recommendations. To get your month-long free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report by Andy Hecht while locking in the low introductory rate, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Larry, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Hmm. Okay, folks, I'm back, but I don't think this is the Futures Hour. I believe this is just my regular show on Tuesday. If I've messed that up, I'm in big trouble, because I always thought that Tuesday was followed uh, right after Monday, so I hope I did that correctly. Anyway, we're talking about a Futures anyway, so I guess uh, I, uh, they are correct. Uh, I posted into Tiger TV the copper chart that we've seen many times before, uh, you know, way back last July uh, in 2011, we had a, uh, this is uh, Wednesday, this is correct, it's the day following Tuesday. Whew, boy, it's tough when you get old. I'm going to have to start carrying around a notebook to tell me which day of the week it is. After the, all the action that we've had uh, in, since the last five or six hours, I mean, you, you, we used to dream about this kind of stuff when we first started trading, but now we have it all the time. Every time Bernanke speaks, we have these fantastic moves, and uh, boy, they hit some beautiful numbers, and that's the, the real beauty of looking at some of this stuff. Anyway, get back to copper. Uh, in July of 2011, we had that expanding wedge uh, occurring, and the market cr crashed from there. We had it again in February of 2013 and the market totally collapsed we've we've not even bounced at all and when you stop and think that we are right at all-time highs again on the S&P and the Dow Jones and the New York Stock Exchange index is not very far away it really is a um, 
really uh, amazing, you know, what we're uh, looking at here is the fact that copper, you know, can't get out of its own way. And we make so many things with copper that it's just really amazing to me that that's, uh, you know, what we're looking at. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, this is Wednesday for sure, the 17th of uh, July, and uh, we will be looking at... um, uh, the next uh, chart that we're going to look at, uh, of course, is I wanted to switch uh, gears and get into the dollar index because we have a real interesting chart in the dollar index that uh, I've mentioned on the show before, but I haven't been able to uh, bring it up. I hope that it posts into um, Tiger TV. It's the uh, U.S. dollar uh, index on the uh, futures, and um, it's pretty much runs exactly what the dollar index itself it does, just like the S&P does. The pattern uh, will be the same. And what's interesting about this is that this pattern that we've been talking about uh, in the stock market, uh, the one, two, three, four, five expanding triangle uh, that Gartley called the T6 pattern, uh, you know, it stopped exactly where it should have, you know, back in, uh, er, you know, early uh, early July, and we've had this, uh, you know, pretty substantial break, and we're we're almost at the 61% retracement uh, of that level uh, as we uh, came to press here uh, this morning. So, if the dollar index is going to hold, this would be the area where it's most probably going to give, uh, you know, some support. Because at that point, we would be having a head and shoulders pattern forming from the low that we made in May in the U.S. dollar, and to the um, Low that we made in into June, right, right at the that came in right on the uh, full moon on the 23rd of June, and now we have another one uh, coming here. Uh, the shoulder, uh, the right shoulder is coming in, and we're going to be having a. I believe we have another um, new moon uh, beginning of next week. I believe it's around the 23rd or 24th. We will have a uh, another a full moon coming in, and so that would not be unusual to see this head and shoulders pattern complete in a few days uh, around this level of where we're looking at uh, right at the present time. Uh, much of the volatility that we have in the currencies and, and everything else, too, is related to, you know, Chairman Bernanke speaking, and that really is a, uh, uh, you know, a big thing because when he... Uh, <laughs> uh, it is indeed a very, very important phenomenon in financial markets is when Bernanke comes on and speaks. It was the same thing with Greenspan. Um, you know, before Greenspan was Paul Volcker. Uh, when we had Volcker, uh, we didn't have all this stuff because when Volcker spoke, uh, it was usually over a teletype. We didn't have all the fancy stuff with the electronic trading and all the things like this. So it was really, you know, quite a big difference when Volcker was uh, Fed chairman back. Back in the uh, back in the 80s, when Jimmy Carter brought him in to stop inflation, and he certainly did, because inflation was 13 percent or higher, and then we had Treasury bond yields at uh, 15 percent, and uh, you know he changed all that. And since uh, he left office, we've been in a 20, a 32-year bull market in Treasury bonds, which I think has finally uh, made a major top. And we had a very interesting pattern today in Treasury bonds that when I don't have time to do it before the break, but we come back from the break, I really want to go into this Treasury bond uh, situation uh, that we have going on right now because it is really a phenomenal pattern. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. 
In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position at Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile.com in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking about the Treasury bonds right now. I've posted into Tiger TV. The, uh, it's a 15-minute chart on bonds, but it gives us enough data uh, to take us back to uh, early July when uh, the Fed did its FOMC meetings, and that's when the, uh, the news came out that they might be scaling back QE3, which, in fact, they came back and said that they weren't going to do that. And as you recall, the bonds dropped $4,000 in two days from the 136 level down to the uh, 132 level, which was the 61% retracement on the weekly charts. And since that time, we've had a most amazing uh, sequence of numbers uh, occurring in Treasury bonds. The first rally of uh, a point and a half stopped exactly at the 382 retracement. Uh, then the market pulled down to an exactly 61% retracement. The next rally went up and stopped exactly at the 61% retracement. And this is something that trades you know a lot more than any of the e-mini contracts and it's uh, you know incredibly active it's about six times bigger than any of the stock markets so these these bonds and notes are they're just huge then after that high was made at the 61 percent retracement back on july 12th 
we pulled down to a 61% retracement again. And what happened was we went up and completed that big ABCD pattern uh, today at the 786 at the uh, 135. Uh, 28 level and that was the exact high and so I believe right now what we're looking at if you look at this carefully I've drawn in a, a 135 oh, excuse me it's a 12345 uh, expanding uh, triangle it's shown on the uh, Tiger TV but the big yellow um, triangles that we have set there and you'll see that it did stop exactly you know where it should this tells us that we should be dropping at least two or three thousand dollars in Treasury bonds over the next four or five trading days. That's what it's saying. Now, if we get above the um, 136 level, this would certainly mean that this pattern has failed. But at this particular time right now, it looks like it's in vogue to, you know, come down uh, quite a bit. So that this is on a short-term basis, of course, but this is what we're, we're looking at, and it's a, a very tradable pattern. Uh, this is one of the things we were watching today. It was on our radar, uh, much like we were watching gold and uh, also the euro and you know the pound and a few other things because of the fact that the Fed is in there. These markets sometimes make these extensions up to finish the patterns, and that's when they, they get ready to turn. But I think the m most important thing that you can take away from this Treasury bond uh, chart is the fact that uh, the numbers that we're looking at uh, on these Fibonacci numbers are the same numbers that I talked about at the beginning of the show, you know, with the little riddle of how you add two random numbers together, and after the eighth iteration, you'll come out with um, the exact ratio of 0.618 when you divide one number by the other. And this is a, another perfect example of how these numbers, you know, come into play. And this is a huge market, folks. This isn't uh, this isn't the price of um, you know BlackRock or Blueberry or BlackBerry or something like that. This is a big market. A lot of people are involved in Treasury bonds, so that's why it works so good. So the market is basically a chaotic event, but it's non-random, and that's what we're trying to look at. So we're looking at bonds here to come down somewhere in the area of the 130. 133 level, a couple thousand dollars uh, from where we are right now. On the long-term basis, uh, if you recall, uh, you know we were looking at this uh, just uh, just a week or so ago when we were uh, we were discussing Treasury bonds, and we uh, noticed that the 61 percent retracement had been hit you know, perfectly uh, on the Treasury bonds. Now, should we go below the 132 level? I cannot tell you how bearish that is. Uh, that means that the price of bonds would, would, will, will be in big trouble uh, should we broke, break below the 132 level because that means we had a, a very strong you know three point rally coming out of the uh, out of the move uh, actually four almost four points coming out of the move and it gave up the ghost and that means that we'd be heading down you know something far sinister remember we've taken out last year's uh, highs in interest rates in other words interest rates are higher than they were you know, last year at this time, the 30-year rate is now uh, substantially above, you know, 4%, uh, which is the first time that's happened in, you know, well over 18 months. So interest rates are starting to go higher. Um, that'll be, you'll see that in car loans. You'll see that in automobiles. Uh, the automobiles are cars, duh. Uh, but you'll also see it in, uh, in the um, housing market. Your, your mortgage rates are going to be higher. I don't know how they can make credit cards any higher because they, they hammer most people, you know, uh, pretty badly. Um, I saw that the average rate that the banks charge is somewhere around uh, 18%. I mean, I don't think the, the, the family charges that much. Uh, to to borrow uh, to borrow money, but but who knows? So this is what we're looking at in the the treasury bonds. Treasury notes are the same thing. The low that we made uh, a week ago, that low must hold. If we don't, we'll be looking uh, you know very very uh, closely at rates going a great deal higher. Um, the, the it's really interesting because when when Bernanke, I have to diverge a second, but when when Bernanke is speaking. You really need to look at uh, getting a little bit extra sleep because you've got to be extremely alert and do your homework, you know, very, very 
uh, actively. Otherwise, you're going to miss some incredible moves. I mean, just the move in gold today, if you were expecting that ABCD to occur much like it did the other two times, you know, it would pay great dividends. Now, if you didn't, you still had a couple chances to get in it. But the fact that the market repeats that way is a thing that really, uh, really makes a lot of importance to us because that's what pattern recognition is based on. It's based on probability and repetition. That's all. There's no... Uh, there is no holy grail anywhere. There never will be. Uh, all we're looking at is to find some of the uh, beautiful non-random patterns that occur, and that's uh, primarily, you know, what we're what we're trying to uh, look at. Now, uh, as we've been talking, you know, for quite some time uh, about the market going higher, and uh, as you know, we've we've been making higher highs in the Nasdaq all along, and uh, again we have gone up. And I've got to correct something here, if you'll give me a second, and I will get this corrected, and then I'll post it in here, because I believe we're right at the, because uh, we've, we've got a little divergence here uh, between the NASDAQ and the S&P, because the S&P has not uh, made new highs as yet, uh, and nor has the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's very close in the Dow, I believe, but we still have not, uh, we've not made an, uh, a break in into the new high ground. And that's, uh, I think, uh, you know, very, very important, because if we don't, we're going to have a divergence that's going to mean, you know, something, uh, you know, quite a bit. Now, we also mentioned the Russell, because we, we thought that the Russell Index was going to make a 1.618 expansion because of the fact that it was so very strong. And uh, if we get a chance here, you'll see that we're almost there uh, in the Russell Index. We're just a, a heartbeat away uh, of looking at it. If you'll give me a second, I've got to take a few little things off of the chart here, and then we will uh, we'll take a look at it. And uh, I think you'll be able to see that we're almost at that perfect ABCD pattern that uh, we brought out uh, on Monday's show. Uh, well, we're, we're not too far away. We're only about, uh, oh, about 3% away of the long-term expansion in the, uh, in the uh, Russell 2000. And remember now, we have a, the big market, the New York Stock Exchange Index, the S&P have not done. I don't count the Dow because it's only 30 stocks. I know everybody watches it, and uh, but it's uh, you know it's really not a very good indicator of what the market is doing. If you want to look at what the market is really doing, you really need to look at the New York Stock Exchange Index because that's the one that is the broadest of uh, you know all the indices. And on that one, you know we're still setting at the uh, 786. We haven't really violated it very much. So this is either a very false breakout that's going on in, in the NASDAQ and the uh, small caps, and the real market is, uh, you know, really not doing that. So if you take a look at the New York Stock Exchange Index, you're going to see it, you know, totally different market than you look at it if you're watching the Russell or the, uh, the NASDAQ. That's, uh, that's my opinion, of course, but I'm just looking at numbers. That's all I am. I don't, uh, uh, I don't follow the, uh, the fundamentals. I don't understand them. And uh, believe me, I, I surround myself with some pretty smart people, and some of those folks don't understand it either. But the bottom line is that we're looking at, uh, you know, if prices are going up, there's more buyers. If prices are going down, there are more sellers. Now, I wanted to bring something out on the astrology front because, um, as you know, I look at the, the shorter-term cycles, the lunar cycles, and I look at, the, you know, the Mercury cycles and the Venus cycles. I don't look at the really large pictures, you know, the really big, um, you know, the really large, the slow-moving slow planets like Mars and Jupiter and Saturn very often, but I am in contact with other astrologers that do, uh, it's particularly Arch Crawford. Arch, Arch is my neighbor here in Tucson, and we're, we're good friends. And uh, he is talking about this grand trine, which means there are uh, some very large planets uh, setting at 45-degree uh, angles to one another, which is a... Um, a very important thing on an astrological uh, basis, but frankly, for a trading basis, it's it's you know it's uh, beyond my uh, my time for, uh, for horizon for for taking risk. In other words, if you if I can't narrow it down to a daily or sixty minute chart, I'm certainly not going to put it on a weekly chart. But there is a timing thing this week. It started on the fifteenth uh, and it goes through Monday. It's called the Grand Trine. 
and uh, it has a, supposedly, and I haven't checked this out because I, that's not the type of astrology stuff that I do. I'm basically an aspectarian. I look at the aspects and try to match those to highs and lows. This is a little different because you're looking at you know, multiple configurations. We had one of these uh, back in March of uh, 2009. Uh, we we posted the transit chart at, at that particular time, you know, showing that all the uh, planets were you know in the same uh, in the same area, and we're getting close to something like that right now. And whether that's going to mean anything or not, you know, remains to be seen. But we're starting to see some major divergences here. Uh, frankly, I don't know how anybody can dis uh, lose respect for copper. Copper has been you know, a better economic barometer of what's really happening than just about any uh, indicator that we have. And, you know, it's been going down for a long time, and stocks have been going up. So you have to assume that copper is no longer going to be used, you know, in electronics anymore. And that's always a possibility. Remember, you know, back in the uh, back in the 80s, you know, Eastman Kodak would not... Uh, you know, respect the computers coming out and the fact that, you know, they were going to have computer-generated cameras and pictures and stuff like that, and they were still using silver filament. And, uh, you know, that really ended up being their demise. That's what sent them to, uh, you know, Chapter 11. And when I was a kid, you know, Eastman Kodak was one of the nifty 50. Eastman Kodak, Polaroid, uh, 3M, those were the really big ones. And, of course, Polaroid went bankrupt. Eastman Kodak did the same. Uh, 3M is held up together, but, uh, you know, we lost two of the nifty 50, you know, because of the fact that, uh, you know, they just wouldn't uh, respond to new things that were, were going on. And uh, I heard a rumor the other day that they're going to come out with a telephone that you can actually carry in your hand and make calls from anywhere in the world and that you can actually take pictures like a camera with that phone. Can you believe something like that? I, I can't believe it, but they say they're going to come out with that. I, I will wait and see. I'll have to be uh, a little skeptical. I, I was wrong about color TVs. I thought that was a fad. And I was wrong about microwave ovens, and that was a fad. So maybe I'll be wrong about the cell phones, too. I don't know. One of, one of the things that... Uh, that is really funny is I get to travel, you know, all over the world, uh, you know, to all different parts of the world. And uh, we go to Asia quite a bit. And you go into China where the average uh, daily wage is about $8 a day. And all the people have cell phones. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredible. They all have cell phones. And, of course, we, over here we have to pay $50, $60 a month for our cell phones. But in China, you know, at $8 a day, they're carrying around cell phones. So they basically give them the phones for free, and they basically don't have, uh, you know, any charges, I guess, because how, how are you going to have a cell phone when you're only making $8 a day? But everybody has them over there. It's, it's just, you know, truly amazing. And, you know, we, we, we go out into the city, you know, to see the, uh, you know, the people that live there. We just don't stay in the financial district. We actually move around, you know, to see what's happening in the economy. When we were in Shanghai, you know, we spent, uh, Sarah and I, every afternoon uh, in the evening, we would go out and, you know, see what was happening in the, in the greater part of Shanghai. And believe me, you know, it's a, it's a huge city, 30 million people. You know, it's a, you know, three times the size of New York. But boy, I'll tell you, it is a you know it's a, it's an incredible city. The New York Stock or the say New York the Singapore Stock Exchange building that they just finished uh, back in February is uh, 96 stories tall. And uh, believe me, they don't do much business in the Singapore Stock Exchange as yet. But something like uh, you know something like that in the future, they will be able to uh, take a look at it. I didn't mean to regress here, but uh, I am uh, you know trying to keep an eye. You know, on some of these markets at the same time that I'm uh, that I'm doing the show here, uh, so I wanted not to lose not to lose track of that. Uh, I just want you to be be aware here that we are uh, we've got some really big divergences here that uh, you know that we're looking at, and that's the main thing that uh, you know that's here, and it it, uh, it you just don't want to dispel that. That's that's just my opinion. Of that, I know we have the uh, the commodity market is uh, not till tomorrow. Come back on, we'll be right back.
Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the Forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we have a caller in from Atlanta. Nabil, are you there? Hi, how are you? I'm good. What can I do for you, my friend? Uh, just looking at Apple, what's your, uh, what's your take on it? Well, I have a pretty clear take. I don't know if it's the right one to take, but we'll, I posted into Tiger TV. Uh, since the high we made back in early May, uh, just yesterday, uh, we made a 61% retracement to the exact number up at the $432 uh, per share level. We're trading at around 429 right now. 
it's taken us, uh, you know, well over two weeks to get up this level. And uh, I, I believe that we're ready to start down in Apple from this level. I, if you wanted to look to buy it, uh, I would wait until it makes a, a retracement of this last move, and that would take it down to around uh, the 405 level, uh, down about 20%, uh, um, not 20%, what am I talking about, 10% uh, from where it is right now. Let's try that again, 5% from where that is right now. It's around $405 a share is a 61% retracement off of the low from uh, late May, but that's where I'd be looking to buy it. I'd be looking to short it right now. And if it gets okay. above, uh, if it gets above four hundred and thirty-five dollars uh, per share, I would consider that to be wrong. So your risk here is about five dollars a share. It's not too bad. Okay, and I have another question. If you have time, sure, I certainly do. Yeah, what, what's your price projection on the S and P when we start moving downward? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm afraid if I gave you that answer, I'd probably be taken off the air at TFM. <laughs> I'm more bear I'm more bearish than I was in October of 2007. I have not seen this many bearish patterns across the globe like I'm seeing now, and I think we're looking at something really sinister. I'm probably full of hot air. Well, I'm sure of that, but you know maybe it'll come to the top of the of the balloon pretty soon. But it's just very, very bearish patterns everywhere. And this thing in copper, I mean, why isn't copper going up if everything is okay? Can you explain that to me? I don't understand that. You know, I I just doesn't make sense to me. Okay. So I might I would give you an idea of the target. I think we're going to take out the. Um, the lows that we made in October of, uh, excuse me, in March of 2009. I think in a, within a, in, in within two years, between 13 and 14, maybe early 15, maybe earlier, in between around two, uh, 2014, 2015, that we will take out those March uh, lows from 2009. That's what I think. Okay. okay. I was very fortunate in the deal during the 2008 market uh, to be short with our good friend Tom O'Brien. We were um, I was just doing the show at that time, and I was incredibly bearish, and, uh, you know, it worked out okay. I've been trying it here uh, several times. Uh, I haven't been hurt too bad. I, you know, got banged up a little bit in the S&P, but the bonds and the, the crude oil and the gold have really, and the currencies have just been fabulous to trade. And so, uh, but I'll, I'll be ready when it's ready to turn. Uh, I have uh, haven't done anything today. Uh, things have been, you know, so active in everything else that I just haven't had the opportunity to even look much at the S&P. But, frankly, I think we're, we're getting very, very close. We've got huge divergence now in the NASDAQ and the Russell, copper. I mean, come on, guys. The VIX, the VIX is holding up. And to me, that's a no-brainer. But, you know, I'm just a technician. Okay. Thank you Does so that, much. I hope so. I hope that answers your question. But, uh, you know, believe me, it could easily go uh, a lot higher in some of these markets because if the uh, S&P, you know, gets much above, uh, you know, 3 or 4% above the old high, that would take it up around the 170 level. I think I would be around 1,700 in the futures. Then I would have to say, well, I've, I've certainly missed something really serious, and that would really be uh, – well, it wouldn't be a surprise, but it would be very important for sure. So if we get above 1,700, that's it. That's it, folks. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Nowhere, spelled N-O-W-H-E-R-E. -E. At one point, we've all been there. Whether it be our health, career, or our finances, some might be there right now. So where are you when it comes to your trading and investing? Better yet, where would you like to be? The good news? I can take you from nowhere to now here right now. Same letters, N-O-W-H-E-R-E, -E, just a totally different emphasis and focus. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and on July 25th at 6.30 p.m., I'm going to share with you a trading strategy that I began on May 10th when the S&P was at 1627 and closed at the same price eight weeks later. That's right, the S&P went nowhere versus a trading strategy that produced a 100% hypothetical return in that same period of time, and it's now here for you. 
Subscribers to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability, have free access to this exciting live workshop. The trend is your friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Decisions shape your destiny, and your trading destiny is now here for you.